Hello, everybody, and welcome to Data Science Foundations. Uh, we'd sort of just finished uh, our sort of second round of insights. Uh, and the second round of insights dealt with the bias variance trade-off, uh, the approximation generalization trade-off. These are both rephrasing of, of the two. The way that we can decompose test error into two things that, that we can generally get a better handle on. One is bias and one is variance. Or you can think of it from the uh, approximation versus generalization error. Um, and we learned something. I mean, we, we, we learned a couple of things. You know, we learned that there is this trade-off between bias and variance, and this is due to model complexity, as well as noise, as well as the uh, amount of data points you have in your sample. Um, and we're sort of left with this question, right? Um, how, do we, how do we actually choose the best model uh, for our particular data set, uh, such that we get the best of the bias and the variance trade-off? Um, so normally what is done is something called regularization. This is, this is sort of like the, the whole, um, uh, sort, sort of the whole trick here. Um, so, so in the past, people would uh, change models and, and people still do change models some, uh, you know, reduce the number of parameters in their model, uh, change the features in such a way to decrease the number of parameters in the model, decrease the size of the neural network in order to do this. But in the modern day, generally speaking, regularization is, is what's used. Um, and so, so let me let me sort of give you the intuition for this. So, so right now we're we're well versed in the approximation generalization trade-off. Uh, the question that I asked today is, well, how do I know what the right size model is? So, so I've given you sort of a quick rule of thumb as to what the right size model would be, um, and this was sort of in the the linear case. This is. Uh, this, this sort of right size model is going to be something along the lines of for each um, free parameter in your model for each infinite parameter in your model go ahead and have 10 data points but then you, then you sort of come off with this question um, well what if you have 25 data points or what if you're working in a very very noisy data set or what if you're working in a not so noisy data set as you saw if you if you work in a data set with lots of noise or with very little noise you can get away with fitting um, with, with using more parameters, using a bigger model, with using a, a larger hypothesis set. So, so how do you choose? Um, and so the, so the really cool thing here is we use something called regularization. Regularization is, is sort of a programmatic way in order to, to choose the, the right size of your model. So let me, let me go ahead and sort of show you this. Um, so for example, for a linear model, it will look something like this. So let's say we have, we have 10 columns and 25 rows. So a linear fit would look something like this, w0 plus w1 all the way up to w10. But we're at 11 free parameters, so 11 free parameters for 25 data points. So how do we reduce the number of free parameters? Well, I mean, we could just randomly drop 9 or 10 of the rows, but what if all of all of the, the different columns of data that we have are very useful? So what do we do? So regularization comes in. What we can do is we can constrain the hypothesis space and let the model choose uh, which weights are most important. And, and the general way that we do this, and, and sort of one way that you can do this, is we can say, hey, the, the sum of the squares of the weights should be less than a particular value. Okay? Um, so this is what's called L2 regularization. This is sort of generally what's used. And sort of this constrains what, what the sort of range of feasible models will be. So now we can only have models that have weights in this in this sort of small range instead of having sort of, you know, still these are infinite parameters, but the parameters have been sort of infinitely reduced in size, right? So uh, so, so this is sort of the way that we, we, uh, we use regularization in this case. Okay, so let's just go ahead and show you how this works sort of empirically. And, you know, all, all regularization is is just sort of a way to say, hey, we, we want to reduce the model in size. Um, we're, we're going to go ahead and specify the amount of reduction in size that we want. So we'll, we'll have to say, let's reduce the model uh, such that the, the, the sum of the squares of the weights will be less than x. And you need to provide this x. But then the model gets to decide which of the weights are important, which of the weights aren't important. So, so where, where, do, where does it put most of its sort of limited amount of weight, you know, limited amounts of, 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 of force behind these weights, and where does it want to put it? Okay, so let's just, just sort of go ahead and show you this empirically. Um, okay, so, you know, again, we're back to our sort of normal uh, data set. We've got a sine curve. So the x's go from negative 1 to 1. The y's go from negative 1 to 1. Let's go ahead and let's fit some models. 
So in this case, what I'm doing is I'm fitting some models. I'm fitting it on, let's look at the number of data points here. So 50 data points and then testing it on data points in order to get the approximation error and the generalization error as well as the test error. Um, so we're, we're working in the approximation generalization framework. Um, in this case, I'm, I'm sort of fitting a you know pretty small model in this case. So you know two polynomial features. Uh, but what I'm doing is I'm adding regularization. Um, and so in this case, I'm going to be adding some amount of regularization. And I'll, I'll show you that in one second. So let's, let's see what this looks like. So here, I've sort of got the, the normal chart. So on, again, on the x-axis, I've got uh, the number of data points that our model has access to. On the y-axis, I've got the regularization penalties as we go from sort of a very small regularization to a very large regularization. And, and this sort of heat map is showing off the training error. So uh, as, as you can see, as we decrease the regularization, as we decrease the number of data points, the training error gets better. So we sort of get like the best training error when we have very few data points and very little regularization. We get the worst training error when we get many more data points. Right, because more data points, it's harder to sort of fit all the all of these data points because they're somewhat noisy. Um, in this case, it's which type of noise, deterministic or stochastic? It's deterministic noise uh, because we're just fitting a sine wave and we're trying to fit it using a polynomial function. Um, as we increase the regularization, we actually decrease our training accuracy, which is kind of interesting. And, and why? It's basically because as we increase the regularization, what we do is we decrease the model size. As we decrease the model size, well, of course, it's harder for us to exactly fit the training set. We can now do the opposite thing. We can, we can view the model generalization error, and we see the exact opposite trend. And, and you know, you see this. This is the exact same thing that we saw in the bias variance trade-off. It's just in this time, you know, what we're able to do is we're able to get a little bit more fine-tuned in toward the actual model sizes. So if you remember in the bias variance trade-off, uh, these... Uh, these sort of charts weren't as smooth. Uh, now they're they're really quite smooth. We can really see what the what the surface of the bias variance trade-off is. So as we increase the regularization, we go ahead and we decrease the generalization error. And as we increase the number of points, we go ahead and we decrease the generalization error. So you can imagine the test error is the addition of these two things. So the addition of this heat map as well as the addition of this heat map. And so I, I go ahead and I plot it down here. And once again, you know, it, you just gotta find the sweet spot. And so in this case, it looks like the sweet spot is, is pretty high regularization and, and uh, with, with a good number of data points. It was always as you increase the data points, the test error is going to decrease. Um, okay, so this is kind of the conclusion. The, the real solution to this, um, at least programmatically, what, what people do is they use regularization. Um, regularization can give you very high, can give you very fine-tuned results as to what you want the bias variance trade-off to actually be. Um, and it sort of allows you to allows the model to programmatically choose where it should where how it should reduce the model size instead of you having to choose it itself. Um, now here's the real question then. Okay, so so we know that we use regularization in order to choose the model size in order to sort of fit the bias variance trade off. But how do we how do we actually do this? Um, so right now I've sort of been using the test set in order to sort of see you know how this affects the the model size, but Right? We're only supposed to use the test set once, so what do we do? Well, it's, it's quite simple. Uh, next time, it will be another short lesson, and we'll go over exactly how we, use, uh, how we choose what the best regularization is for a particular model, and sort of the, uh, the conclusions we get from that. So I'll see you next time. Um, as always, if interested, the comprehension questions are here. Um, Please go ahead and answer them. If, if you'd like, write them on a piece of paper. If you've seen them before or if someone else has, has answered them before you in the comment section, just go ahead and give them a little upvote on their comment. Otherwise, if, if no one has answered them before, go ahead and comment down below and I'll, I'll, be, I'll be happy to sort of uh, list what I think of them. Okay, thanks guys and girls. I'll see you next time.